Ali Sayed is on his way home. He's a local boy, but he now teaches religion in the city. Ali doesn't recognize Abiz, the village he left a few years ago. On the road home, Ali sees his two brothers, Hossein and Muhammad. In front of the ruins of their childhood home, Ali and his brothers talk over what's happened. The ruin you can see here was my parents' house, and now, that's all that's left of it. Just before the earthquake, my parents had come back from Mecca. They had brought back lots of presents for the family and friends. They had invited everyone round to eat with them, so they were at home in their house when it happened. It took just 10 minutes on that fateful 10th of May to destroy Abiz completely, including the home of Ali's parents. The quake that shook eastern Iran killed 180 people in this village alone. Ali has taken advantage of the holiday for the Imam Khomeini's birthday celebration two weeks after the catastrophe to organize a convoy to help his village, bringing both the vital necessities for survival and prayers. Muhammad, the youngest of the Sayed brothers, still lives in Abiz. When the earthquake struck, he was teaching at the village secondary school. After helping the pupils get out, he rushed to find his parents. I heard groans coming from the sitting room in the house over there. I went to where the noises were coming from. I was crying and screaming. I shouted and screamed. I followed the sound of the voices. I could hear them shouting, Mr. Hassan, Mr. Hassan, help us. But next day, I realized that Mr. Hassan had been buried too. I ran around the place three times, looking everywhere. But the third time, I couldn't hear any more sounds. And an hour later, when the staff from the school came, we got my parents out. They were lying facing Mecca. The death toll from earthquakes in Iran is endless. 10,000 dead in 1968, 25,000 in 1978, 40,000 in 1990. Geologically speaking, the country is caught between the Arabian and Asiatic tectonic plates as surely as if it was stuck between hammer and anvil. The people and authorities are used to acting quickly when a quake strikes. The Red Crescent Society coordinates national aid. They access stocks of emergency equipment and food, which are rapidly sent to disaster areas. But this time, stocks were practically exhausted, and Iran called on the international community for help. <laughs> Michael von der Schulenberg of the United Nations Disaster Response Plan for Iran coordinated the international aid effort. If you ask me what the role of the United Nations here in Iran is, 
I would say that to provide a framework for the international community to provide assistance faster and more effectively. That is the main contribution. Iran has a lot of experience of dealing with disasters, particularly with natural disasters such as the recent earthquakes. And um, they are very effective in, in responding. And I think uh, we have to adjust our work to the country requirements. I think we are not here to, to be seen. Uh, I think what we are doing here, we are working very closely with the Na National Disaster Task Force. <laughs> A few kilometers from Abiz, the governor of Hajiabad's office has also been damaged. He's now living and working in a tent. His job is to organize the local emergency aid effort and to distribute food supplies and equipment where they're needed. This time it's a woman living alone with her wounded son who's come to ask for a tent for shelter from the bitter wind and cold. She's had to wait two hours, but she's got what she wanted. <laughs> Many countries responded to the plea for help from Iran and the United Nations, but it's more than food, money and expert help that have been passed on to the disaster victims. I wish to thank all the countries and all the organizations who've helped us. They've done a great job. In any crisis situation, even if a country can manage by itself, the fact that support is coming in from all over the place, the sense that people are reaching out a hand, it's really heartwarming. And the people of Abiz and Hajiabad who've lost loved ones really need support as they dig through the rubble, hunting for traces of personal possessions, a photograph, anything useful that can be saved. It's not just the houses that have crumbled here, it's the economy of the whole region. I've lost all my money, you see. I have to use anything I can find to build up some capital. During the months to come, I'll try to sell this electrical cable. I've got nothing else. It all depends on what else I can find underneath here. Shur, a small village in the north, suffered a similar catastrophe just a few months before Abiz and Hajiabad. Fifteen people died in the tremor that hit this area. To stop such events repeating themselves with the same disastrous consequences, the Iranian government has called on the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, to draw up specifications for architects and engineers carrying out the reconstruction work. Mortaza Zadeh is one of the engineers involved. He's supervising the reconstruction of the new village of Sher. It's being rebuilt in the same place because there is apparently less chance of a repeat tremor here. Before, when there was an earthquake, houses built out of reinforced concrete and steel were completely destroyed. But these houses, even the ones made of earth or clay, were built according to the new principles that we're using, and they've stood up much better. I've told them to make sure that they don't make the cement between the bricks too thick. So when you look at the house from a distance, the walls will look nice and uniform. The new houses being built through the Iranian government's housing foundation each have two rooms of 20 square meters. Mortaza Zadeh makes sure that rules on vertical and horizontal stability are respected. In other words, the roof at least should not fall in on the occupants. <laughs> Uh, 
دولت انجام داده به سلام مبلغ 200000 تومان به لحاظ کمک ایتالیا ایرانیان گورنمنت پرووایدز فاینانشل سپورت فور ارثکویک ویکتیمز ایتس دان ترو دی هاوزینگ فاوندیشن The victims are given two million rials, part of it paid directly to build a new house. The other part is paid in cash so that they can buy the things they need. But the first help they get is obviously the emergency aid provided by the Red Crescent. In makeshift schools set up in tents in the villages hit by the quake, classes have restarted. Compassionate the merciful. We want the government to rebuild our destroyed house, to rebuild our agriculture. There's a strong sense of mobilization and action in Iran, and an even stronger sense of solidarity. No one denies it. Certainly not Mortaza, who sees the way the villagers are working together to rebuild their homes. And not Governor Jani either, alone in his tent carrying out the daily tasks of administration. Still less Ali, his parents dead, who's come to help his brothers and sisters in the village of his birth. <laughs> 